Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to I'll Be Right Over Here, the Wingman podcast. My name is Steve Guy, comedian and author of the book Memoirs of a Wingman. As always, joined. I don't. I don't. I don't have anything. <laughs> I literally have thought about this all day, <laughs> and for some reason, the word loquacious has been in my head. But is that, that a does, real word? It is, but it's what like does it mean? loquacious is I. I I'm probably messing this up, but I feel like it has something to do with speaking and vocabulary. Okay. So. I could be that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. I have a decent vocabulary. Do you? You just asked me what. Well, I mean, not that. (laughs) (laughs) The inspirational Rebecca Maxwell. Hello, everybody. As always, (laughs) my co-host on this wonderful journey with all of you about dating and relationships. Uh, But before we get too far, uh, of course, thanks to our sponsor, Jenkins Insurance Agency. If you have home, life, auto, business, any sort of personal insurance needs, Jenkins Insurance Agency can take care of you. Out of Talmadge, Ohio, they've been serving the greater Northeast Ohio community for decades now. And why not have them serve you? So check out Jenkins Insurance Agency. And, uh, of course, we are on the Cleveland Comedy Network, a division of the Cleveland Comedy Festival. But we're coming to you from Golden Ox Studio in beautiful Tremont neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Look, if you need to do voiceover work, maybe you need to record a radio ad for your company, uh, voiceover for your company's great presentation or something, doesn't matter, all sorts of vocal work, not just podcasts. Things happen at Golden Ox Studio. Go to goldenoxstudio.com to book yourself some time and to check out more information. How was all that? You did great. You did great. Better than (laughs) I would have done with my (laughs) loquacious vocabulary. (laughs) Uh, So this is a, a fun thing to chat about because uh, for those who don't know, there there is an age gap between Rebecca and I, even though you may have learned as you listen to the show that we have a lot of similar experiences in dating and relationships, as I think most people do. There are still generational differences. Like when we talked about mixtapes, <laughs> right. how to teach you how that worked. Uh, but I am... In my upper 30s, you are in your upper 20s, so there is an age gap. And I think we, we thought, hey, let's, let's talk about age gaps uh, when it comes to people's dating lives. Absolutely. It just makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I do date somebody younger, so yeah. I got that going for me. Yeah. Not I'm slightly like, older. Yours is slightly older? Just 30, he'll be 31 this month. Oh, yeah. yeah. So not too much. Yeah, we have like an eight year age gap. Oh, okay. In my my deal. So Well, like I th- I feel like a lot of the times people make a big deal of big age gaps, but I feel like once you are twenty one, uh huh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like I don't like a twenty one year old and a thirty one year old, is it still kinda weird? Yes. But like a twenty year old and a thirty year old is even weirder. It's like, what are you gonna do with them? Are you gonna take them to the bar? You can't. Like yeah. you know. But I feel like once you get to, especially like once you get to 25, like who the hell cares how old someone is? I feel like at 25, you have a a decent amount of maturity. You've experienced some things. Right. In the world. And at that point, you're kind of probably on your own and like, like living wise and you just. Yeah. Yeah. But so she's eight years younger than you. Yeah. Which is only weird when we talk about. She's only a little bit older than me. When we talk about things that we experienced in the past, you know, in the different times. Yeah. And it'll be like, oh, I was, you know, off to college or something and, or my senior year of high school. And she's like, oh, I was in the third grade. I'm like, that's, <laughs> like, that's weird. Yeah. When you, yeah. Yeah. Once you get to those topics. But. Right. Like, let's just pretend like that's not a thing. Yeah. You know, that's. But that's it's weird. fine. I feel like there's no. There's no rules on like who you connect with. Yeah. Like. I was ve- like when I was 19, mm-hmm. I connected with a much, much older man, um, mm-hmm. became very good friends, whatever. It ended up turning into a little bit more. And then I kind of was like, wow, this is a lot because yeah. it's a very large um, age gap. But like, I mean, we still keep in contact to like text me on holidays, stuff like that. But it like wasn't weird because he was so cool. Like we had so much in common, he, like taught me a bunch, like 
super funny. Like, I didn't think anything of it. Plus, like, I'm just genuinely attracted to older men. Uh-huh. Like, me in high school, oh, my God, we had, like, I feel like we've talked about this before. Like, we had so many hot teachers. Yeah. Like, gray hair is my thing. Like, I love gray hair. I just think it is so attractive. It's always just been something that I've been attracted to. Were you a big Taylor Hicks fan on American Idol? Then? God, no. <laughs> <laughs> No. He had gray hair. That poor he man. did. He did. He was like 27 and he had gray hair. I actually have um, like a fake uncle who he was turning gray in high school. He has like been full gray his whole life. It's so funny. There is there is a guy on a television show called Million Dollar Listing, mm-hmm. New York, that I, is probably up your alley. Yeah. he's uh, He's got gray hair and he's uh, he's probably a year or two younger than me, I think. Yeah, it's he's just, in his he's in his thirties. Yeah, mid to late thirties, probably. Yeah, I knew a guy, one of my many mics. Um, mm-hmm. He was pretty much fully gray, and he's probably just now thirty. Mm-hmm. Like, but it looks good on him. Like, this, he rocks it. This guy apparently was going gray in his twenties. So, yeah, uh, Ryan Surhan mm-hmm. is his name. I'll have to look him up later. Yeah, big real estate guy. Married, he's got a kid. Uh, you have a boyfriend anyway. So right, like, right. You know, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the age gap is always an interesting conversation. I feel like you say 21 is a, is a, a good moment or good kind of measuring stick in terms of like when you're dating younger. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that's, anything younger than that is creepy. It's funny. Cause I always tended to kind of view that even when I was in my twenties, Yeah, it was that idea was like, well, we can't go out and grab a drink. Right. Like what I'm doing with my life right now doesn't add up with right. your life. So even though like the age gap was small, it's just where you are in life right. is very different. Like if I was 25 and wanted to date a 20 year old, like five years is not that big of a deal. Right. But like a 20 year old is still in the college party mode. Right. And I'm in, you know, let's go to the bar and have a few <laughs> drinks mode, not yeah. like let's go to a kegger, you know. Right. So it's just, hey, you're in different stages. And some people are more mature and yeah. some people are. Well, like I think, so uh, when I was 20, I worked at Harry Buffalo yeah. and we would go to City Tap with our coworkers after and they knew them. So they never ID'd us, whatever. They thought we were all 21. Yeah. So I ended up getting one of the bartender's numbers. Mm. And we went on a date and I made sure that we went to Tilted Kill because they always serve me underage. Like oh. I usually, I knew most of the girls that worked there and We're like, not getting anyone in trouble because that's no longer right. and a like, place here. <laughs> right. And they, you know, barely ever ID'd, whatever. And so I made sure that that's where we went on our date so that he wouldn't know that I wasn't 21 yet. Clever. But then girl. I ended up telling him because I'm an honest broad mm-hmm. and he got so pissed at me. Like, not even because I was young, but because obviously it's just a year. Yeah. But he was like, you could get me fired and I could like, you know, never bartend again, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, you didn't get caught. Like, yeah. Relax. (laughs) Uh, That reminds me of a, I was not under 21, but, you know, you said it doesn't, you, you're not really in charge of who you connect with and. And for me, it's like age has not necessarily ever been a thing one way or the mm-hmm. other. Uh, but I was 25, I think, 25, maybe 26. And there was a 45-year-old woman. Is that how old she was? Maybe she was 42. Maybe. She was in her 40s, for mm-hmm. sure. And uh, she was at a bar that we would all... Uh, friends of mine regularly go to. So we'd seen her a few times, made conversation, kind of sort of like it became a friend. Like mm-hmm. she, she was a very attractive woman and, uh, you know, we were into each other and she wanted me to go back to her place one <laughs> night, but she was like, uh, she's like, I, oh, I just, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm like, uh, Hey, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. I wasn't necessarily anticipating that anyway. Yeah. Certainly don't want to assume those kind of things. Uh, but what's, I guess, what's your hold up? Because you seem kind of indecisive about saying this to me. Like if you would have just said nothing, I right. would have thought nothing. Right. But instead the way you're coming out, I'm wondering. Like, it's like, I just, uh, it's like, I don't want to be a, a cougar. It's like, I'm not ready to be, 
Oh my god! Like I, men, she's like just mentally, I don't want to feel yeah, like old, I'm that yeah. old and yeah. that age yet. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, but like, but she didn't know how old I was. Oh, I knew how old she was. Oh, she said, "How old are you?" I said, "I'm 33." She must have been 42. Oh. I said, "Yeah," because in my mind, I thought if I get within 10 years, yeah, here we go. Oh, so I didn't know how old she was. This is how I found out. I knew that she was in her 40s, mm-hmm. and I said, "I'm 33." Yeah, and she goes, Pretty "Oh," safe. she's like, well, "That's nine years." She's like, "Okay, that's okay." Nine years is not, that's not too bad. <laughs> like, okay. So did, did it happen? It happened. How was it? Fantastic. Yeah. It happened, yeah, happened Man, to, uh, see, that's some bullshit. Because... Happened several more times after that. And then, uh, and then I, I think we were, became Facebook friends one day. <laughs> no, I don't think we ever were. Somehow. She found out. Yeah. Like she knew it was my birthday and, uh, oh, that's what it was. She knew because we talked, you know, about different things. Oh, my birthday's day after St. Patrick's Day, whole thing. <laughs> so she remembered, like, sends me a happy birthday text. She's like, oh, and she was like, how old are you? And just not thinking, like, she forgot how old yeah, I yeah. was. But in her mind, I was still in my 30s. Yeah. So I was like, ah, 27. And I was like, oh. oh, my God. Was she pissed? She thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Good. She was like, you lied to me? I was like, yeah. 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 She's like, but then she was kind of flattered by it. She was yeah. like, so she's like, were you, because you were just that, that into, into me? I was like, it, yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I didn't want to, I was like, I saw where this, yeah. like, I knew what was going to happen. I wasn't going to be like, yeah. Yeah. So I lied by like six years of my age. <laughs> right. But lied, which never happened. You don't usually lie up unless it's to be 21. Right. Right. But it's so funny in this instance, I was like, uh, I'm in my thirties now. Which yeah. Not something a lot of people want to do, That's fine. but it worked. Yeah. I had this, um. This regular, when I worked at Market Garden, yeah, um, I was 23, 24, and like just recently got out of my long term relationship. And there was this guy. He w- definitely had gray hair. He w- he was forty five. Pretty sure. Pretty sure he was forty five. Um, and like no matter what, every time he came in, I would give him the eyes. Like he knew I was into him. Like he was just kind of like laying low on it like didn't do anything about it so then eventually he asked me out and I was like yeah fuck yeah absolutely (laughs) like sign me up like I loved this guy and and he would always come in in like a suit and I'm like oh and so that was my first time ever going to Southside Uh we went on our first date there and ended up like going back to his house he was loaded like I don't remember what he did but he was loaded and (laughs) right And like we went in the hot tub and all that. He had two kids, but they weren't with them with him when we went on a date, whatever. Yeah. Um, And so we go back, whatever. He has this huge fucking dog. One of like the big, I don't know, some big ass mastiff or something. Yeah, mastiff. That's huge. Like the same size as me. Uh So you know, whatever. We get in the hot tub. We end up you know doing the deed and cleaning the hot tub. Yeah. And this man, I was so disappointed because. Not only was the sex really not good, mm-hmm. um, he sounded like the Kool-Aid man the whole time. Like, that was his, like, sex talk was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, literally in that tone, oh, too. No. I was like, oh, my fucking God. Then we go to bed, and this fucking Mastiff is laying next to me and cuddling me and weighing 700 pounds. Like, <laughs> I was like, and then he snored the whole night. It was The guy awful. or the Mastiff? The guy. Okay. Oh, my God. It was awful. Like... I felt really bad. And, oh, we went out one night after. there's more. Before then, we went out. And you know how, like, you've obviously been a bartender. You know how old people just love to just make out at the bar? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He did that to me when we were at Punchbowl. Like, he, and I'm like, oh, my God, people are, I know are going to see me. I guarantee you, I I literally never go anywhere without seeing at least one person I know. I'm like, oh my god! I think this is why me. I don't like PDA. This yeah. has always been a thing with girls that I've I've gone out with and dated, and like, it, it just makes me so uncomfortable. And I never really understood where it came. from. I just thought in my mind, I thought, am I a horrible person? Am I like soulless? No. I think it comes from it's bartending, bartending because, and watching this happen. Yeah. I was like, nobody like, wants to see home. that. Like, go home. Right. Like, I don't care about like giving a little kiss or whatever, but like, I mean, this man was like making out with me that my makeup was coming off of my face. Like, just go into town. I mean, that's, this is a, 
bartender stories is a whole other <laughs> right. episode because I, I know like, I <laughs> right. have them. But yeah, I, oh, you know, I you did remind me of one thing though. When I went back to this lady's house, so she was a cougar and a milf. Okay. Uh, and the best part of it, like unexpected best part, was that you know she had kids, but they weren't there. But she had made she had been making homemade meatballs for when they came home the next oh day. Oh my god! And so when I woke up in the morning, like this pan, like they were like saucing and stuff <laughs> overnight. And I was like, "What's going on here?" She's like, "Oh, I made homemade meatballs." She's like, "Oh really?" <laughs> She's like, "Do you want a couple of meatballs?" I'm like, "Hell yeah, yeah dude!" Yeah, please. <laughs> At least you got something out of it. Shit. So I was like, oh, shit, not only did I sleep with somebody who's like 16 years older th- than me, but then I got meatballs. That's fine. That's a good, that's, that's a, a good, good trade off. I didn't got some fucking calamari. I don't know. Meatballs is a, uh, listen, as a kid that grew up with an Italian family, yeah, that was, uh, I was on board and, and they were delicious. <laughs> she was in a, she was an Italian woman. So it was fan. I mean, she did a great job. Nice. Great job. Nice. Uh, what when does the age gap get weird though? And see, like, okay, here's the thing: there is an age gap for going out with someone mm-hmm. uh, a couple times, and you know, sleeping with them, whatever. There's that, and and a whole sugar daddy thing that we'll get to. Yes. But then there's the whole age gap of like when you're really in a relationship. Yeah. Right. Like famously, everybody thinks about Hugh Hefner and the Playboy bunnies. And like, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. Right. Or well, like I Woody like Allen, the sick bastard that he is. And once they have like grandkids. Yeah. Like or they're like a grandparent age, then it gets a little weird. Like the the first old guy that I, that I'm like still friends with, he had grandkids and like great grandkids. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> he had great grandkids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> he was a really cool guy. I met him the weekend of that, you know, that like DUI hotel thing that you have to go to? No, because I don't have to go to okay, it, but well, I know what it is. Okay. Yes, so yes. I had to go to it when I was 19. And, and so did Grandpa? He was the one working it. He was the instructor? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> yeah. He was like a. a so a, you were li- so He was oh. sober and like so inspirational. So we started this about how you had smoke show <laughs> teachers, and we've had that episode before. So basically, you just you fucked up. You got DUIs. You had to go to this thing, and you lived out this teacher <laughs> weird fantasy, but with the DUI instructor. Yeah. And so that you could pass your class. Well, I mean, I was going to pass the class regardless, but mm-hmm. I, he definitely snuck me into his hotel room when he was not allowed to do that. As yeah. the instructor. We played cards. He was great. Of course you played cards. <laughs> Probably played bridge. <laughs> I don't remember what we played. Yeah, a little bit. But he was super nice and like just always like Of course he was super nice. He's a grandpa. <laughs> Did he give you some mints when you left? Uh, no, I wish. He was but like, hey, uh as you He leave would take the, me to lunch and as you leave the room, there's some butterscotch there <laughs> over I on the dresser and you want to take the butterscotch candies. I'll take it. I will take it. Oh but it was like it, it was so funny because it was like instantly when when I got there, he was like he loved me. And it was just, I don't know. There was just something. How old were you? I was 19. Oh, and he was in his 60s. Yeah, yeah. obviously. Yeah, because I'm doing the math. I have a uh, I have an 18 year old niece mm-hmm. and this is not going to happen. <laughs> she will be much older when the time comes. But logistically, Sure. My parents, who are now in their early 60s, could become uh, great grandparents, right. I suppose. But uh, <laughs> not for another 15 to Right. Well, it's all dependent on like, the age and stuff. So, like, I didn't really think that much about it, but whatever. But, I mean... My God. Regardless, like... Rebecca Marie <laughs> Max. I just made that Marie! Up, I don't know. Anne. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The other one. <laughs> oh, it would be. It would be. There's, your initials would be Ram. You know what right. I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I don't know why that's always been a thing for me. I mean, I don't, maybe it's daddy issues. Maybe not. I just, I don't know. Those are more than daddy issues. That's, right? Uh, that's, that's some deep-rooted shit there. My goodness. But, I mean. Hope he kept in shape. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> But then, okay, so as we're talking about age gaps. But you wouldn't have dated gaps, him. No, absolutely not. Right. That's he was just weird. a nice guy to have around. 
good for good advice, stuff like that. Like, so as we get into the sugar daddy topic, yeah. Um, like, there's this whole thing now with like dating apps. If you just set your age from like you know 50 to 100 and swipe on everybody, that's what people do to find sugar daddies. Or you oh. could go on seeking arrangement, um, which is a little more to the point. I feel like Craigslist is good for this. <clears throat> Missed so, connections. I don't know if I would do that, but. Oh, that's a <laughs> um, but fuck, where was I going with that? I don't know. Set your dating apps. 50 oh, to 100. but my settings naturally would be, um, I always did like a, my age to probably 41, uh-huh. just naturally, because I'm sure. like, there's some fucking hot 39 year olds out yeah. there and like, whatever. But as we do discuss age gap, I would never in my life, um, date anyone younger than me when I was like, like in my twenties, like yeah. I don't want to date a 25 year old. I feel like 25 is the youngest I would go. Okay. Because before that, like, Oh God, men are just awful. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're not as great after that, but I feel like I ugh, like a 22 year old, like you could be hot. Yeah. Yeah. I might, I'll probably sleep with you. Would not now, but, um, yeah, no, there's nothing we'll there. Now. There's nothing. I feel like I can connect with older men, but I can't connect with younger men. Okay. You know? Yeah, sure. But I feel like it's opposite for women. I feel like a lot of men can connect with younger women because women are just more mature in general. But they there's are. not. But it's not like a weird thing for an older woman to have a connection with a younger man. Like when they get to that age. It's not a weird thing? No, like I feel like yours... That's a little more normal. But like me as a 27 year old talking to a 22 year old. You think that's different? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is different. Um, I just think it's different based on gender. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to think back when I was younger, if I had those scenarios, I think I did. And it was, you know, back then, uh, which is funny. It still have conversations now, but like back then I'm like, you know, 23, I'm fresh out of a, uh, relationships that borderline ruined me for some time. And, uh, you're dating people who are pushing 30 in terms of women. Mm -hmm. And I think where it stems from too, though, is there is undeniably a biological time clock for women. And if you know that that's what you want, right? Well, dating someone who's 22, 23, who still yeah, has not so much experienced to, so much yeah. and wants to, and, and you can't fault them for right, that. It's not, yeah. There are, not 20, their fault there are 22, 23 year olds who certainly are willing and ready to be like, hell yeah, I want to settle down and have a family. Yeah. And this is how I grew up and my parents were young and I'm all right. for it. And I know exactly what I want to do in my life and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And, that's you know, so more power to them. That I mean, that is a thing. But you're right; it's it's uh, it's much more rare for that to be the case. And I think that that's that's why. Yeah. Whereas once women get older, they've done the family thing. Maybe they just want to have some fun. Yeah. Uh, they they caution to the wind. They yeah. do not give a shit. Yeah. And good for them. Yeah. I, uh, just like uh, younger men. Uh, They're gross, huh? Yeah. What, what They're nice to look at. Is there but. is there you know back, oh. is there an age gap that's too large for people that are when they're dating? Because we talk about like celebrities, you'll have like 12, 15 year age gaps, and then all of getting married. And uh, well, see, I I think it's also different with celebrities well, because sure, the exception to the rule. You could but. be like if I became a celebrity right now, would I date someone that was sixty years old that I? have been obsessed with my whole life. Absolutely. fucking lutely. <laughs> but am I going to date um a 60-year-old off the fucking streets of Cleveland? Probably not. Right. Like Maybe. I'm not going to be like, "Hey dad, he was born the same year as you. Here we go. Like yeah. this is it. I'm going to marry this guy." You know, but if I was famous, I've known some people who've done things like that, but yeah. uh which has always been odd and that yeah. like non-celebrities. Yeah. And we thought, well, don't you think that that's kind of right? Well, and, I mean, it's all situational, obviously like there's no judgment passed or anything, sure. but there is, there does come that time where it's like, okay, like what really do you have in common? Like you right. can have things in common. Absolutely. But like deep down, what is going on there? Well, you, you think know? about like, if there's a 20 year age gap, right? Yeah. Like, if you're 50, this person's going to be 70. 
Right. And depending on how they've taken care of themselves right. or not taken care of themselves in life, like, all right, well, are you now potentially prepared right. to... And that's why people assume spend the rest of your life taking care of this person, taking care of this person. Yeah. That's why people assume the whole sugar daddy thing. And like, obviously I, I would assume as a bartender as well, you have played the game dad or daddy. Right. Which is one of my favorites it's because a it's a good one. You know, it's always, you, you got to pay attention for a little bit, but like sometimes that's like the only time I really will eavesdrop on people's conversations as a bartender. Cause I'm like, <laughs> mm. Is this a daddy situation or is that your dad? Yeah. Because like there's a very thin line. So let's let's get into this because you have, as I have come to find out, some experience I do. in this whole thing. You know, you talked about dating apps. <laughs> like how the hell does this whole sugar daddy thing even come about? Like these guys are just, they're coasting for younger uh I was going to say younger chicks, and I know it's so offensive. <laughs> I'm trying to be That's better. Okay. I, I, I it's okay. It's okay for you, yeah. but to other yeah. listeners, I mean, like, what? I mean. I promise, ladies, he's not an asshole. He's, yeah. You know. I'm a slight surfer <laughs> dude ask or something. I don't know. So I never used dating apps for it. I know a lot of younger girls now do because uh-huh. um, it's just a little bit of an easier way. Um, what I use, so this was when I first moved downtown, I was broke as shit. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Yeah. I'm a hot 23 year old, whatever. Uh, so uh. I'm like, all right, I'm bartending, whatever, but I could be making more money than this. So you get on seeking arrangement, mm-hmm. which is literally geared website, for sure. finding a sugar daddy or whatever. And the thing is finding people that want the same things. There's some that want, you know, obviously like sex or they want to meet up. There's some people that just literally get off by sending people money. Like don't even have to do anything, just kind of conversation and like give them attention. Um, I met two. Mm -hmm. Um, One of them, he was so fucking cool. Um, I like, I would just like, he was just fun to hang out with. He had really great taste in wine. Um, okay. And he was just, like, very well-traveled. We talked about a lot of, like, business stuff and, like, shit like that. Um, and then the other one was just kind of, like, it was a little creepier. And I think he was married. I'm not proud of that. Mm. Um, <laughs> but 23-year-old Rebecca had way less morals than 27-year-old Rebecca. Um, but it was basically, like, a per-meet payment type thing that you discussed beforehand. Okay. Um, so that one was like 250. Um, and we only met like twice. $250 when yeah. you would meet. this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you have to sift through mm-hmm. like the weird ones. And like, that is what was, what was my problem? Like, I don't feel comfortable. Like the girls these days are so bold. They'll literally just ask people for money and they get it sent to them. Like, sure. Whatever. And I imagine you also have to set your own personal parameters. Yes. So you kind of, you're like, you tell them what you're looking for. Yeah. And, and what I found to be exhausting about the whole process was the having to go through that with every single person. Like, what do you expect? What do you want? Blah, blah, blah. All that yeah. shit. So it was like something that I tried mm-hmm. and thought that I would be fine with. And then in the end game, I really was just like, nah, not really into it so sure. i kind of ended that um because you but, hear stories there are some guys out there who are like let me just send me a picture of your it always goes back to picture of feet but yeah let me, show me show me your feet and i'll send you a thousand dollars i'll do that I'll, any fucking day i'll pay you monthly this much and yeah and do this and sign me up i actually recently like a few months ago there was um a gentleman who messaged me on facebook or not facebook twitter mm-hmm. and he was just like he just liked my personality on the internet, whatever. Like he's yeah. like, I don't want any nudes. I just made a lot of money this year and would really like to help you out. And I was like, is this fucking fake? It wasn't fake. He has sent me like so much money just for no fucking reason. Yeah. That's just to say like, how's your day? Like whatever. For Super some, nice. Some guys it's an emotional thing. Yeah. Like it was just like, I'm like, wow, that would really help me out in a tough time. So thank you. And like literally didn't expect anything. Um, but then there's like websites now where you can sell like your worn clothes, your worn shoes, which I really want to get like, look into that. 
mm-hmm. because you really don't have to do much. You literally ship it to them. It's basically just like they're buying clothes off of you. Yeah. But you wear them and you don't wash them because people like to smell that it's shit. It's weird. Yeah. I don't even know what you do with it, but if I'm making $100 for two pairs of underwear, <laughs> shit. You're for it. Yeah. I'm here <laughs> for it. Like, I just don't know anyone that wouldn't be. I, mm. I've i yet to meet someone that is a sugar mama or uh, who has had a sugar mama. Now, I know that those do exist, too. The Me closest too. that I ever came to such a situation, and I've never told this story before to anybody, Ooh. I just realized. Way back when, there was a website called cougar911.com. Okay. You'd go to it if you want to find cougars or whatever. I worked as a like cell phone retailer, it, like like third party kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And this guy and I were stuck in this office all day out in the boonies that nobody would go to. We weren't around anything. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, there were four other stores of the same brand within a two mile radius of oh. us. Some of them by in like major shopping plazas. Yeah. So like nobody gives They're a shit. They're not going to come to you. Right. Mm-hmm. So we would find ways to entertain ourselves. <laughs> we found out this was a thing. We made up a name. We made up a profile. Mm-hmm. And there were women on there who literally just wanted to be appreciated yeah. and sent nudes to us as this one guy. And so they were like, my husband doesn't appreciate me. I am whatever age, blah, blah, blah. And I just, they just wanted someone to yeah. tell them that they had a hot body. Yeah. And a lot of them did. And they, and we were like, sure. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. And, and we did. And that's Fuck that yeah. was it. And we'd have and we'd have converse in the same thing. We'd have conversations with them. They just wanted somebody to talk to. Yeah. Like these are housewives who are stuck at home, empty nesters. You know, they're like fifty years old, and they just want a couple twenty year old guys. Well, yeah. they didn't know it was a couple of guys. They just they thought it was just one. They you know they wanted a twenty year old guy to be like, yeah, you're you're hot, and yeah. I would appreciate you, and yeah. blah, blah blah blah. But also like, how's your day? How are yeah. things? And that was it, like while their husband was out of town. And because it was a national website, you know, they're from, they were all over the place. And like the location stuff back then wasn't what it is now. Mm-hmm. It would have been interesting to have found out if any of them where they really were. Mm-hmm. Uh, we never went that far with it because, again, we were under a fake alias. Right. But uh, I, I could have. And yeah. uh, to bring it full circle... The the name of the person that we created was uh, uh, Jack Kelly, Jackson Kelly, to be exact, which is, of course, the character in Memoirs of a Wingman. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Nice. So that's where that name came from. Very funny. Um, uh, I always thought when I would be on there, you'd see like these super hot younger guys. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, there's no way you're real. Like, these like 26-year-old guys. I'm like, no way. There's no way. Like, this is fake. You can tell when like so just came into some fake. money maybe. And- but like, I'm sorry. If you're a hot 26-year-old guy, you don't have to pay for, I mean, unless you're like yeah. really weird. But like, I don't know. Now, you know that this is not just a thing in like a straight community. Oh, this yeah. is everything. Oh. When I was younger, my older brother's, uh, at the time his best friend, uh, was this really nerdy, dorky, overweight gay guy who was like tall and overweight and um, just nice guy. Liked him a lot. Kind of a weirdo goofball. Mm-hmm. But he had older men who would buy him like the newest version of playstations and shit. Like he'd bring it over to our house and he'd show up and I knew that he had no job. He maybe worked at like a coffee shop or something. Yeah. And he is buying all this shit. (laughs) Hey, you guys want to play the new, at the time, brand new PlayStation 2? What? Where the fuck did you get a PlayStation (laughs) 2? Well, 
this guy sent it to me. Are you shitting me? Yeah, yeah. another guy sent me an Xbox. What? Well, that I feel like it's even more in the gay community, honestly, because like, and they kind of depict it in shows and stuff where, you know, people are on the down low. For him, it so, was that. It were, there were some married men yeah. who, you know, didn't want their wives to know, but they wanted. So some of this was like, right. you're being bought off. Well, right. Which is weird. That there's like, that's another thing that you kind of have to discuss is yeah. like some people want it to be very discreet. Some people want to treat it as more of a relationship, but it not actually be a relationship. Yeah. Like I know a girl that she had one very consistently. They would go on trips. They would do. And then that's the thing. Some people want to travel. Some people, which like, I sure. wanted to do the travel thing, but then I'm like, how am I going to explain how I'm in fucking Mexico? <laughs> you know, like, with what am I going to, older man. am I going to have to come up with a story? I just didn't feel like putting all that effort into it. Yeah. So this girl that I had known, um, like college age, she had a guy that she would go on trips regularly with. They had a very like regular arrangement, whatever. Her mom knew about it, thought it was great, all this stuff. So then she ends up, meeting someone and oh. is in a relationship. So basically she had to choose between keeping this sugar daddy who she did have, you know, feelings for whatever, mm. or this other guy, she ended up actually marrying the other guy. Yeah. Um, and like ending her sugar daddy relationship. This was the first time I ever heard about sugar daddies, by the way, it was this girl. Um, and she was like, yeah, and that's how I found out about Seeking Arrangement. I'm like, all right, let me go look at this shit. <laughs> Let's find one of these. But yeah, he was like not not that old. He was like in, four, in his 40s maybe. We were like 19, 20. And she th- it was great for her. She was like, yeah. Wow. Fine. Here's, here's a question. If... People have a sugar daddy. You know you know how you sit back and you think uh, as weddings come and there's always a conversation like, well, you're kind of friends with a couple exes, but should they be invited to your wedding? Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a sugar daddy that you didn't have to sleep with, right, but you had this relationship that had been built up for many yeah. years and he's respectful of the fact that you are now dating someone, but he's like, I ah, bet I still would like to keep up with you, keep yeah. you know, kind of, you kind of keep contact in, in each other's lives. Sugar daddy allowed or not allowed to go to the wedding? I would say if it was not someone that you were like sleeping with or like had slept with. Uh, and I, I guess that'd be couple to couple. And if you're honest with your partner about it and if they're cool with it, like, I don't know. I feel like the guy should have a say. I'll tell you what. If I were going to get married and she had a sugar daddy for years and years, never slept with him, was just a guy that wanted to buy her shit. Yeah. You bet your ass he's coming he to the pay, wedding. Yeah, he's going to get a good-ass gift. Yeah, you know also, what that gift he's probably paying be. for some of the wedding. Hell yeah, I'm sure. down with that too. Right. Open That's bar like people. always said, he's like, if people, like, I wouldn't be mad if you sold feet pictures or like whatever. He doesn't fucking care. He's like, if it's paying the if, bills. If this dude wanted to buy the liquor for the wedding, mm-hmm. come on down, pal. You Bring it on in, Carl. I'll call you daddy. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Welcome, welcome <laughs> me to the family. Let's right? do this, you know? That's the thing is like, there's such a bad rep, rap, rep. What is it? Rep? Rep. Okay. Um, Reputation is what that's short for. I know, but I feel like I've People heard say it, it as rap. A, somebody gets a bad, bad rap. rap. Yeah, that's, you know? I don't know. So I just don't it. Yeah. Um, for people that, you know, like get money from other people, but I'm like, well, it just depends what you're comfortable with. You know, like what, like where you draw the line and like whatever. Like, I think it's also, it gets this negative connotation though, is also because it's, it's, it's a little and, bit of gold digging, right? Well, yeah. That's, I mean, that's exactly what it is. But on the flip side, it is men who are willingly allowing that. Right. They want that. Right. That's different than. Right. It's Uh, not like I'm going after this guy to take advantage of him. He wants to take advantage. It's a it's an advantage situation on both ends. It's not Anna Nicole Smith from the 90s who married an oil tycoon on his deathbed. Right. It's not that. Uh, Yeah. It's not something that Kanye would sing about. Yeah. Yeah. And like I get the DMs all the time, you know, like there's always like, oh, but they're always fucking fake. I'm like, you know what? I would DM you back and see what you are about. Yeah. 
But I can tell that you're fake. Like they I have gotten some fake sugar mama. Yeah, uh, DMs. they don't yeah. try that hard to make themselves seem real. Right. And then like you have ones where they're like, oh, send me a gift card to this and you'll get your payment or whatever. And those are That's all fucking weird. scams. Don't ever fucking fall for that shit. Yeah. Um, those are all very fake. Like if there's any stipulations of you having to spend money to get money, it's not real. Like, no. <laughs> um, this reminds me of a thing that I only recently came back up again. And I don't know why. Um, you know, who Paul Walker is. Yeah. Fast and furious. Yeah. You know that he was dating a girl. He started dating her when she was like 16. Really? And he was 33. Yeah. That somehow this goes That's under the radar. Very uncomfortable. Yeah. It was like a rumor that I thought that I had heard, and I was like, ah, that's bullshit. But then I was like reading something. I haven't fully done my research on this, so I don't want people to get all up in arms yeah. yet. But from what I read, it sounds legitimate that this was the case, and it may have been who he was dating when he had gotten the car wreck, yeah. even. But she was older. Yeah. Old, at older than time. 18 at yeah. the time. But uh, yeah. <sighs> Yeah. See, I I guess it's hard for me to say like, ew, because like, yeah, I mean, I was 16 in high school trying to bang the principal, like not legitimately going after it, but I would if he gave me the opportunity. Yeah. But the argument is like, you don't know that yeah. you shouldn't be doing that. Right. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I, like there. I just don't there see. Is, there is taking advantage of. Yeah. That well, see, mind. that's also the problem now that like 16 year olds look like they're 30. Yeah. So I just feel like there's it, it probably happens so much more often now that I bet there's a bunch of girls a lot that lie about their age. Then people just get caught in a 4K and like better ask everybody for that ID. Right. Like yeah. I hopefully I it, that. Is definitely definitely a thing. Bring the bring the ID. Yeah. First date, cool, great. Right. Hey, Show me. You don't got to pay, but bust out that wallet yeah. so I can see. Yeah. Your identification, please. Right. If uh, I feel like if you're randomly sending money though. If that driver's license is vertical, this ain't gonna work. <laughs> right. <laughs> we are staying <laughs> vertical. <laughs> yeah. You're oh, going home. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> yeah. I want no part of that. <laughs> Ugh. But I mean, Ugh. if the sugar daddy works, uh, sugar daddy thing works for you, uh, more power to you. Yeah, fine. Have fun. Do what you got to do. If that's what you like and they like. And there is, I mean, there is an argument to be made that it is somewhat prostitution, right? If right. you're getting paid to sleep with someone. Right, right. There there are loopholes, though. Yeah, I, I guess. like. Yeah. That's the problem. That's, you know, they'll be like, oh, well, I spend time with them. They were basically dating. So it's yeah. like, but it's the same thing, like, when you're dating someone that has money and they pay for everything, how, like, it's very sure. similar. You very know? similar. So they just it's a fine line. have a lot more money to spend right. on you. Right. It is a fine line. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, sex workers can have daddies too. That's right. probably, I mean, really, that's kind of where it comes from, I feel like. But yeah. Definitely. Get the, get that money. I right. don't know. I don't have any way to segue out of that <laughs> or anything good to say. All oh, that whole last five minutes, just uh, weird, uncomfortable. Uh, you know, as you think about celebrities doing shit. And Woody Allen I yeah. brought up earlier. You know the Woody Allen story? I feel like I've heard it, but... You want to talk about age gaps. So his wife, currently, mm -hmm. was his adopted daughter. Oh, you yeah. know, isn't that guy like a fucking psycho freak? Dude? He's a like, weirdo. Yeah, yeah. Clearly a pedo. So, yeah. and there's, there's, um, uh, claims that he molested, um, um, oh, what is the actress's name? Mia Farrow was who he was married to oh. her kids. There's claims that he oh, wow. molested them and then, you know, they, but they adopted this Asian girl as oh. their daughter. And I think she was like. 12 or 13 when she came over and he divorces Mia Farrow and marries this girl when she's like 18 or 19. So like you knew yeah. that creepy ass shit was going on. Yeah, definitely. And that age gap is like 50 years. Yeah. Which is a whole other thing. Right. Uh, 
that's, that's yeah. You know what I mean? I, that's the biggest thing to me when I think in my head about age. I'm like, ugh, I don't, I don't yeah. want to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be remotely close. Yeah. To any of that nonsense. But then I, you know. I know. So it's, it's uh, again a very like thin line of like I don't think anything of it when it's like me. Yeah. But then you think about all these other little girls like I uh, think about older men going to strip clubs. Yeah. And like being sad and lonely and yeah. and the strippers are all of younger age, you know, mm-hmm. 19 to 25. I mean, you have some that are 30 and in their 30s and mm-hmm. uh but mostly Probably yeah. like that 19 to probably like 26, let's say. Yeah. Age range there. And, you know, there's 40, 50 year old men throwing money at them, sometimes older. Yeah. So it's like that's a whole thing. Yeah. Uh, some of those guys come and see their favorites. <laughs> that's true. What, I don't know. What should be the cutoff? Should there, I mean, I guess you shouldn't put a cutoff, but. Right. I, I don't know. I just. Uh, Life is weird, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to, because I'd be a hypocrite if I said a teen, I was 19, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I, yeah, I think back and like, oh, this is, these are weird age gaps, but like there are women in, of celebrity status who are like in their sixties. Right. And you look at right now, I'm like, yeah. Right. Right. All right. I was bartending a private event several years ago and there was a lady I found out was like 65 or something. Mm -hmm. And I, at the time I I was in my earlier thirties and I was like, Oh my God, I am attracted to this 65 year old woman. Yeah. Never saw that coming, but she was fit. She kept everything like, you know, celebrities are one thing, and I feel like they get all this work done. They yeah. they make sure to keep themselves up for a certain purpose. Right. But, like, here I am in the wild, mm-hmm. 65-year-old woman, randomly, I'm like, well, right? son of a bitch. Right? You just never know. Yeah. So who would I be to judge everyone else? Exactly. If she were to have said something to me, and I would have been like, yeah, yep. I'm, on, I'm game. Yep. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, to wrap it all up, basically, um, we didn't really get anywhere in terms of giving you advice on how to handle all this. Just, Just don't be, be careful. Be careful. Don't be creepy. Yeah. You know, don't. Yeah. yeah don't be problematic. Yeah. Be cool. Just be cool. No yeah. matter where that age gap is. And also, but understand if you do get into a relationship with someone and you have this age gap. Know that there are going to be so questions, many challenges too, yeah. challenges and but, questions. Yeah, people are going to question it. Be all prepared the time. <laughs> for all of it, and rightfully so. People, are, I mean, their family's going to question it, right? Rightfully so, right? Sure. Be be ready for all that stuff. So, just know what you're getting yourself into. Be conscious and aware, mm-hmm. and you know it's it's one of those things that you you have to assess and and figure out. Hey. Is this worth it? Yeah. And don't keep banging a dude that sounds like the Kool-Aid man. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Don't do it. It's not worth it. And if he's old enough to be your grandpa, make sure (laughs) he's got some butterscotch waiting for you. Always get the butterscotch. Candies, caramel, (laughs) those little pink mints that look like Pepto Bismuth. You ever seen those? Oh, good and plenties. Yeah. There Mm -hmm. you go. Good and plenties. Mm-hmm. We used to love those as a kid. <laughs> Sick. Uh, hey, if you have any great stories about any of this stuff, or maybe hey, maybe you are a sugar daddy, maybe you uh, had a sugar daddy or sugar mama, um, you are in a relationship with it, an age gap, whatever, we'd love to hear your feedback and hear from you. Email us, be right over here at gmail.com, or hit us up on Twitter at the Steve Guy at Rebecca underscore underscore Max. And that's going to do it here for us. Uh, and I'll be right over here. The Wingman Podcast will be back next week for you. We'll be right over here. <laughs>